Ben Nash here. I'm a co-founder at XY Advisor and founder of financial advice business Pivot Wealth. My business baby I started from scratch a bit over six years ago. In that time, I've leveraged some of the learnings of the XY community to scale the business and become one of the better known financial advice businesses for high income accumulators. You can join me each Tuesday as I have the privilege of interviewing some amazing people where I'll selfishly be able to uh, continue my personal journey to improve every aspect of my advice process and hopefully you can learn a few things on the journey as well. Jump over to xyadvisor.com if you haven't signed up already to share and learn from other advisors or simply download the app. Open Invest is an innovative Melbourne-based investment platform, giving Australians access to investment portfolios managed by the world's leading investment managers, including BlackRock, JP Morgan, and Schroeder's. It's ideal for clients and prospects you can't support via traditional financial advice-led portfolio management. Or, if you have your own well-resourced and experienced portfolio management team, Open Invest can customise their tech to give your firm its own digital investing solution, your brand, your portfolios, your content, accessible directly from your website via general advice. Hey guys, Ben Nash from XY Advisor here, and today I'm pumped to be here with Maddie Bazica. Um, Maddie is a superstar advisor recently relocated from Radelaide up to the Sunshine Coast. Uh, his business, Future Vest, uh, Future Vest, sorry, he's the, the founder, senior advisor there. Um, he's been running his own business for about six years, team of four. Matt, thanks for joining us, buddy. Uh, no worries, Ben. Thanks for having us. Mate, look, there's um, there's a bunch of stuff that I'm keen to pick your brain on, but I thought a good place to start was just to talk about your business story and sort of the evolution, how it came about and, and what's happened over the last six and a bit years. Yeah, no worries. So, um, yeah, the last six and a bit years is just um, of the business name itself, but I started in the industry in about, oh, I think it was 2001, I think it was about 21, so very green and a young buck. Um, just worked with... Um, uh, someone that had about uh, 30 years experience in the industry it was more of a lifey as they referred to back then um, so I started in in the admin role and learned the ranks of all of that and how all the insurance policies work and so forth along with superannuation um, then then moved into a power planning role within within the um, business while I was um, studying uh, I guess the financial planning uh, degree um, correspondently um, while I was working in that firm. So I worked there for about three or four years until they retired and then decided to go out on my own um, in that regard and worked with another gentleman in his business, um, same deal, had about 30 years experience. So I was very fortunate enough that um, learning from two guys over about six years with that kind of knowledge um, and experience in the industry was second to none because you don't get that out of a textbook. So I was very fortunate that for someone that's got a baby face um, and, and looked very young, I was quite privy to, get, I guess, getting the knowledge from some guys that had been there and done it all. So, you know, I, I did get a small slice of the old customer advice record days and through to the FSR and, and to where we are here. So I've, I've seen some really big changes in the industry and, and, look, a lot of it obviously was warranted, um, especially when you look at some of those old customer advice record documents that were provided back in the day. So... Um, yeah. So technically been self-employed for a while, was aligned with a mortgage broking firm for um, quite some time and we used sort of um, piggybacked their name um, from a wealth um, financial planning business name and then um, over time, you know, things changed and then um, we're just on it solely on our own, changed the business name, more targeting, I guess you could say, um, pre-retirees. But then it's probably over the last few years we've sort of realised that, you know, being 42 myself, we're really more giving advice to people probably, you know, you know, 10 years either side of our age and, and more in that accumulation phase. So so we did a rebrand and changed the business name to FutureVest and more more targeting, uh, I guess, uh, people that are still accumulating wealth. So really more trying to help people, you know, build their wealth, obviously protect their assets along the way and, and get them in the right place for, for retirement in that respect. So... So it's it's been a fun journey. It's seen a lot of changes in the industry. Um, obviously, some you know people can question at times whether they've been right, but at the end of the day, I think um, you know the industry is moving in the right direction to where it needs to go. It just needs a bit more fine tuning in some certain areas. So yeah, so yeah, it's probably been what 14, 15 years self self employed now, and um, yeah, got a team of four. 
with us. So we're still, you know, a small business in that regard, but but always looking to grow as well. Mate, I was going to say, talking to baby faces, you still look like you're 21. So uh, <laughs> obviously something, you must be doing something. Uh, yeah, something like I think it's just in the genes, mate. I'll, I'll take that though, yeah. thanks. <laughs> yeah. um, I totally. think in our industry though, it, does, it doesn't hurt to have a few grey hairs because it actually shows, um, you know, you've been around and you've got a bit of experience as well. So, uh, but they, they're slowly coming with four kids, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Well, mate, you've got your hands full on all fronts there. But I'm keen to hear like you a long time in like master of your own destiny in terms of your service solution and what you're doing. You mentioned that the sort of the target demographic for your business has changed a bit over the last few years in particular, but what's changed in terms of what you deliver for clients? Like what did you used to deliver and what are you doing now? What's and what's driven that change? Yeah, no, good question. So look, it's probably fair to say, um, you know, back in the early days, we were really just winging it. You know, there was no real set structure or process involved. Um, obviously, isn't that what you what you're supposed to do when you first start? You're supposed to. Win, well, right? yeah, exactly right. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, you, you're winging it in that regard. Um, look, I suppose too the conversations. Um, you know, we we try to peel back the onion a lot more now as well um, with clients to really get nitty gritty. And and you find a lot of the times that sometimes you know if it's a husband and wife that. They haven't had these kind of conversations before um, and, you know, you you can open Pandora's box a little bit with it as well because it might be that the wife's mentioned something that she's never mentioned to her husband before but it's good to get, you know, all the all the cards out um, of the deck, so to speak, and then work out, well, what is it that the, the client's ideally trying to achieve where probably in the early days we didn't focus too much on the retirement planning. It was more around, I guess, the specific needs of the clients. Obviously, you'd, you know, get try to get an understanding of what they wanted in retirement. Um, but I suppose as time's gone by, we've learned more and more of, you know, I guess more of the holistic advice and, and going through all the different areas that are relevant to a financial plan for a client. Yeah, I think it seems a bit like a bit of a natural progression, especially in that accumulation space. And I know for me, when I first started giving advice, it was the real basics. I was absolutely winging it. Um, but the basic sort of fundamentals, you know, your super and insurance advice and then investments and then building from there. But I think as people are sort of looking for more and then there's more things that you can do. And then when you learn more as well, that there are a lot of a lot of ways that you can add value around those more traditional, I suppose, basics there. One of the things that I think that you do quite well and, and probably better than a lot of people is is around your referrals and the centers of influence and, and driving referrals into your business. How has that all come about and what sort of growth strategies have you used to, I suppose, get to where you are today when it comes to that? Yeah, good question. So, um Look, uh, I find in the industry a lot, you know, you don't really generally get a walk in off the street to come in to talk financial planning. A lot of it comes from a referral point of view. Um, and I find that that's generally sort of how it's been the whole time I've been in the industry uh, over the last 20 years. So I look at it though, when we're, when we're looking at holistic advice for a client and you're looking at the whole bigger picture, you know, we, we talk to clients about having that A team, having the right professional in all the different areas. Um, so, for example, you know, most people don't have a will and uh, generally seems to always be the case. Um, so, you know, you need to address your estate planning. And when you discuss people's lending, um, you know, we don't give lending advice, but it, it's pretty quick that you can pick up to see whether there's a need that can benefit the client um, to structure that in a more appropriate way. Um, you know, even more now asking the questions around people with their accountants. And I find a lot of the times people aren't actually interviewing their accountant to actually ask what they want. So, we talk about having that A team and having the right professionals in all the different areas that we don't give advice. So that way that things can get implemented and they get the right advice up front. So they're structuring things properly from day dot where we've had times where you meet a client and they've just been given the wrong advice and you've got to unwind things. And sometimes it can be a costly exercise for clients once you've made them aware. So we do bang on a lot about having that A team and having the right professionals in the right area. So we found that our business has really grown more from a referral point of view. So what we've tried to do now is um, have those meaningful meetings and conversations with, you know, if it's a mortgage broker or a lawyer, um, get, but more so getting an understanding of their business. What's their business involved? Where's gaps in their business? How can we actually offer value to their clients? Because I think too many times in our industry, we go in trying to get the referral 
and just expect them to send referrals to you. But, you know, you need to build that rapport and, and relationship and, and be trusted because at the end of the day, if you're going to refer someone to someone, you need to have trust that that person's going to take care of your client and look after them. And I feel too many times in our industry, we, we just want to get that referral relationship and, and just want, mm. want to get leads from someone. And, but we forget that it's got to be a two way street, right? So when we go and have conversations with referral partners now, we, we speak very minimal about our business. We explain what we do and how we do it. But the, the main focus on that conversation is really, you know, where's your business? Where do you see that you're taking it into the future? You know, what gaps are you finding in, in your business? And then trying to find ways and where, what can we do that can help add value to the referral partner? And I find by doing that, it's just a natural transition that you'll then get leads back because if you're actually helping their clients in terms of more business being done for them, but obviously adding more value to their clients, it then is a transition where then, you know, they start sending referrals your way. And then what I find over time is you start working together more in terms of some people might be in a position they've got equity. What do you do with that equity to, to build additional wealth? Uh, well, you need to go back to your broker. Um, yes, all right, it, it gives them additional business on their books, but at the end of the day, we're all working to a common goal to get to that um, end criteria that, that a client's trying to achieve. Um, so it's all those little steps along the way to help clients get to that end goal, as well as, you know, maintaining a lifestyle and living for today. Because um, I think COVID, if anything, has taught us all that, um, you know, we don't want to be stuck driving in a car for two or three hours a day going to work. Um, life's too short and, and more important. So I think the biggest key that we've had with referrals and we've got some really good referral partners now, we're all on the same page and it's the same common goal is how to actually improve um, our client's position. Um, but the best best tactic we've found is actually going in and, and talking more about their business and not so much ours. And practically, though, what do you do? Like it's it's well and good to go, yes, I want to add value to your business, but what does that actually look like? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, and, and, and different businesses will have different requirements where um, we're dealing with a mortgage broking business um, as we speak where they just want their clients to be educated more about how to actually structure their money and understand their cash flow better because I find that's a big area where a lot of people just don't even know what their fixed costs are to live and just spend thriftily and don't actually have a set plan in place. So we've been doing some workshops and some webinars just on that alone around you know, how do people actually manage their money better to get them in a better position to look more attractive to the bank so that way they can, you know, then do other finance things for them. Um, we've got another broker we're working with at the moment, which is, I guess, clients that are at that next step to generating more wealth and they've identified clients that have got equity in their home. So we're doing some workshops around, you know, what do you do with that equity? Um, how do you leverage off that? Um, to build more wealth, you know, what tax deductions could potentially be involved? You know, do you have additional income streams to come in other than your super when you retire? So it's more around actually educating their clients on different things, but we're segmenting it for specific clients because you can have a conversation around something that's too generic for everyone and it's only um, working towards yeah. a specific target. So we're more being niche towards who those conversations and workshops are for just to help educate people to then go, actually, yeah, we need to actually get more understanding and advice around on what's the next step. Because too many times you'll find people that m might have some equity buy an investment property and might not necessarily be the right investment property for what they're actually working towards for their end goal. So we oh. just find if we can help educate people in, in their business more around specific criteria that then is going to help add value to their clients and then potentially that's going to help give them more loans to write because they may want an investment property or, you know, we might do a debt reduction strategy or, or something along those lines. So it's really more, on, I guess, identifying what their clientele is, where can, value can be added and then what can be done to help add value to those clients. And how do you go about finding the right people though? Because I think in, I've been we're fortunate to have a few really good referral partners at the moment that we know do great work and that they they introduce people to us when they you know when they come across someone that that needs that help but i i th we haven't really done it extremely consistently or you know in a, in a really structured way and the people like the the referral partners that we've built i've built them from finding people that i know will do good work 
finding people ideally that don't have existing referral relationships with the same professionals to improve our chances of actually getting referrals back. But other than that, just sending them there. And I, I was having a conversation with our these these referral partners recently and saying like I know that I can help you do more business like I know that if I was to sit down with your clients like I could help them understand stuff that's going to make them as you say like with the brokers do more loans but for accountants obviously there's a lot of people that need their tax work done etc cetera, etc cetera. but I find that people in my experience people are busy business owners you know they've got their own businesses that they're focused on and of course they're focused on their clients as they should be but yeah, I don't know that it ends up up the priorities list as much as I would like it to, to go, well, how do we actually, who do we send in and how and when and, you know, what are we doing there? So it sounds like with your approach, especially if you're leading with all of the help, sounds great, but do you find that like, one, it's hard to find people that reciprocate or what's like your strike rate or does it, does it you know, does it fall down in some cases and you just move on to the next one? Yeah, it's, it's a good point, um, you know, what, what you mentioned. And, you know, that probably used to happen a lot um, in the early days where, you know, we generally got referral partners just through connections of people we knew and, um, and it was sort of just having a conversation and then start referring and, you know, hopefully it all works out. And, you know, some of those are still referral partners or we've still got mutual clients and we still do stuff together. I found, though, um, over time, though, is questions are the answers. So we mm-hmm. actually need to ask more questions to the referral partner or potential referral partner to actually find out what where are they at with their business and what what are they looking towards with their business moving forward um because you're right you if it's not overly a priority for a potential referral partner because they're too busy with their own business you need to sort of have that further conversation to go well if you're going to grow what, what what's it going to look like and, and 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 ask more questions around going well if you were to get another five or 10 mortgage broken clients, uh, I'll just stick on the mortgage broken side of it. Um, you know, what, what needs to be done in your business? So I think it's uncovering what potential growth, uh, I guess, issue someone might have in their business and how that's going to look and getting an understanding of what direction they're trying to move forward. Because if you've got someone that's sort of just happy to just maintain what they've got, well, it's, it's not really going to be, um, a viable relationship because they're not hungry to try and add more value to their clients by doing they're just concentrating on their business so you you will find that'll happen i just think you need to just ask more questions about them and their business to get a better understanding whether this conversation needs to stop and, and move on or or whether there's further conversations to have and, and it, it can be similar to having that conversation with the client you know to then work out well are we wasting our time continuing having this meeting or, or does the meeting continue to go further and you know so many times we almost know within you know 20 30 minutes of a meeting that this isn't going to go anywhere but we continue to finish the meeting where i'm happy just to broach the question up front and and ask them you know is this is this something that really needs to be done now is it, or, you, or or later in the future just just to get an understanding of are they serious or not so i think it's very replicated towards these business owners is where you where you wanting to take your business, where you wanting to go, and that's why I found over the last probably five or six years we've found some really good referral partners because we've got an understanding of what their business is and where they're trying to go, and then we've sort of explained to them sort of this is what we're trying to do with our business, and this is how we can help your clients and move them through those stages of life from accumulating wealth and and doing what needs to be done to you know to meet their I guess retirement goals, but the goals. Um, along the journey as well so I just find yeah questions are the answers by asking more questions you get you get a good feel um, I think your gut intuition is pretty good as well because um, mm. you know sometimes you meet these people you don't know them for a bar so they don't know you um, I think your gut tells you a good instinct whether this is someone you, you can work with and, and it's going to look after your business and uh, I don't think it happens too often where you go oh, no way I'm going to work with this person but I think your intuition um, has a big big play in it as well um, mm. in that respect so um nice and what do you do like once you've kicked off a relationship and you see that there's a sort of a broad philosophical alignment and you know clients are aligned you're both wanting to grow like it makes sense to keep keep talking as you said do you with your and you got a number of different referral partners do you have a structured approach as to how you obviously you're working back and forth with clients but sometimes it's easy to get caught up in that like if your your aim is more just like looking at how you can be helping them and adding more value on an ongoing basis, like yeah, is it an ongoing basis type thing, or and how do you how do you actually practically do that? 
Yeah, it's it's a good point because at the end of the day, you you need to instill your business as as front of mind into their business. Mm-hmm. So from our point of view, when we're dealing with a client, all of a sudden we can go right. There's an estate planning need there. There's a mortgage broking need. Um, is there general insurance need to be addressed? And all of a sudden, we're just looking for other areas that clients haven't quite, I guess, reviewed and addressed that. So it's like we'll speak speak to a professional, and then you can sort of look at. I guess the overall umbrella to go, well, these are all the different areas that need to be addressed. So what we find is we supply the templated documentation to them so they don't have to, I guess, spend that time to create that information. So when they send a joint email introduction, it's just templated um, in that respect. So we try to, I guess, reduce as much work on their end to give us that referral so that way it's it's a much easier process because if you make it chunky, it's almost gets to the stage where they're not, it's too hard for them. You, you want to make it easy, but you want to get to the stage that you install yourself in their business through their process. So yes, we're offering value to their clients and how we can help them, but you'll generally find it's a natural progression that there's going to be financial planning discussions needed because if they've got equity and there might be a debt reduction strategy that might be of value, they need to speak to a financial advisor and, and that's when they go, look, we we deal with Matt's firm and, and they have that discussion to then introduce that introduction. So the biggest thing is to get yourself installed in their business and make it part of their process, not just willy-nilly, make it part of their process for each client. And I just found that that, that seems to work quite well, you know, even if it's just a conversation that, um, you know, it might be something to do later on in the track at least you've been brought to attention to them um, from a financial planning point of view. Mm. And what about on the actual, though, the side of how you're helping the the other referring parties business? So like you talked about some of the things that you're doing around, you know, doing some workshops for a broker or um, some some work with clients around restructuring cash flow. Do you, do you just do that on an ad hoc basis when things come up or are you regularly, like, do you make a, a, a sort of specific time to talk to these people about, you know, revisiting what they're thinking and as that as their business evolves and grows? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we 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 touch base quite regularly um, with our referral partners in that respect. It's not just see how it goes and then come back late and go, oh, what about an opportunity? Um, so we'll do a bit of planning with that. So with, with one of the brokers that we're dealing with at the moment with the cash flow side of it, we've actually put in some set dates and some structure to when we're going to do these programs and implement it. Um, I, I feel if it's in the diary, it gets done. If it's not, it just gets to the wayside because we just get too caught up in, in life and in business right. in general. So um, you do need to set some perimeters around um, timeframes of catching up because if you just see a referral partner and then you just do your thing, and you don't hear from them from six months, well, it's not really a great relationship in our eyes. So you need to be front and centre with them and and set time aside to to have catch-ups. You know, how's things going? Is there any way we can all improve in any area? Or, you know, is there a designated sort of bunch of clients that we could uh, that you could target in your business that we could do something specific for them? So we've always got probably three different workshops sort of planned out in advance. So that way there's some structure. You need some structure in place when you're doing it. Um, It it can't just be a conversation and then just start referring to each other. You you want to have some things in place that that you're always constantly, I guess, you know, working with them so that you become more installed into their business. Mm, I love that. And as you're talking, I'm just thinking that um, you could almost make that like a, almost like a condition of you having them as a partner and, and, you know, making that commitment up front to go, well, actually with our partners, this is how we work, that we do this periodically and we want to have a, you know, yes, we want to be talking to clients and we will, but we want to talk big picture about our relationship or, you know, planning for the next, how we're going to collaborate moving forward. Um, yeah, I like that. I think I'm going to, I'll try that on with our guys. And I think at the same time, you know, I'm fortunate enough that we've got a business that has a whole heap of different referral partners and, you know, there are a few different mortgage brokers. So how do you refer to all three mortgage brokers? It it, it makes it hard. Um, So that's why we sort of take more of the approach of, you know, how can we add more value to you guys and and to Mm. your clients? Um, Because obviously as home loans are dropping, um, reducing, I guess, you know, their, their trails reducing from that point of view. So, if there's an opportunity to, you know, use some equity or, or whatever it might be to 
look at you know producing other growth assets to build their wealth well that mm. that allows them to try and keep a client long term as well but at the same time you're working as a team collaboratively to get that client to that end goal so um, mm. i think it's important that from where we, we, we sit is you know we want to be in contact and in connection with our referral partners and i don't think it actually hurts to sort of say look we you know our business is built more around that so um we say to them you know our expertise is more how can we help you generate more business that, that builds your business not so much getting referrals back the other way because um sometimes if like i said you know we've got three different mortgage breaking referrals you can't just send them all to one and not the other so <laughs> it, it, it's more about how can we help them to build their business and in turn i guess there's financial planning discussions that are needed for their clients which then obviously come to us in that respect and I think we're in a fortunate position, as are the obviously the the any potential partner doesn't need to you know want to work with us or choose to work with us ultimately. But there's enough people out there that um, you should be able to find someone that aligns from a philosophical perspective that is you know um, aligned from a how you want to actually work together perspective as well. Um, oh, so it makes nice, nice, so much. Um, can you, can you change gears a little bit? Uh, what are you What are you focused on moving forward? And I know that you just sort of uh, made some pretty significant changes in your business license, partly relocation, relocation for yourself, or not so recent. But um, what are you focused on moving forward from here, from a business perspective? Yeah, good question. Um, I know there was something posted not long ago about you know being a one man band, being in the middle, and, and and sort of you know being excessively big. I don't want to get to the stage that we're we're really big to the extent that um, we, I won't say we become a corporate, but we lose that sort of self-touch within within the organisation, like, you know, um, having the right team and, and making it fun for everyone within the organisation is important. So we still want to get to that stage that, you know, you know we're a decent size, but we don't want to get too big that all of a sudden, that, um, you know, I've got 40 people that I need to manage because um, I think that'd be a headache in its own right. Um, and I don't want to have my role specifically just doing that. Um, you know, I love meeting with clients and, and I'm sure a lot of advisors where you meet people, you, you find out their situation and then obviously we can then add value to help put them in a better position. Our main goal is if, um, you know, if we can help clients to meet their short, medium term goals, but also get to their retirement goals, then, you know, that, that's a tick in the box every day of the week um, for us. So it's more about how do we make sure that we, one, bring on the right clients moving forward. So um, I know we learned this early um, in the piece, but it's we actually put it back on the clients that we're actually interviewing them. And, and I'm it. quite open about it to say that we, we don't take on everyone and, and we actually need to see if you're the right fit for us. Um, and, you know, and then allowing the clients to understand that, you know, it's we dictate how things are done, not not the client, which, you know, potentially was that's how it was done back in the day. So we're really specific on who we want to take on. We want to take on the right clients. Um, so that way, you know, we're building a really good good team but a good clientele um, that we can work with as well. So so we're, we're in that growth phase now. It, there's always a balancing act with certain things that, as you go in that respect, but we want to get to the stage that, um, you know, there's other advisors to meet because ideally the more people we can meet, the more people's lives we can improve. So th that's the end game for us. Nice. Yeah, I think it's it's – we sometimes lose sight of we're so busy in our financial planner land, but you know people come to us, especially these days. I think where advice is more, uh, maybe more transparent in terms of what people can expect and when they're actually shopping around for providers, you know what they deliver. But I think that um, it's something that I talk to a, our team about that it's like people come to us because we're the experts, and they've come to us because we've we've clearly articulated what our philosophies are, and they're bought in with that. It's like you don't um, go to a doctor, like a specialist doctor, and tell us, you know, dictate when you're going to meet them on how you're going to meet them and what the what the course of proceedings is. But we we sometimes lose sight of that when it comes to the the planning. So I think you you need to lead the clients and they need to follow as well because you're guiding them. And as much as I'm all about, you know, empowering the clients and I'm not telling them what to do, I'm not telling them what to do when it comes to their money, but I am telling them what to do into how to make their money decisions. Like you have to follow the, the our approach because that's why you come to us. Otherwise, we're just trying to follow their approach and it's like, well, why are we having this conversation? <laughs> yeah, well, they place? shouldn't be there then, should they? So, exactly. Um, no, you, look, you've got to lead them down the path and you've got to teach them what to want. 
um, in that respect. But at the same time, you know, we are the expert in this area. So it's, you know, I, I just find the best approach is making clients aware and giving them as much information as possible. Of here's the different options available and how you can proceed moving forward to, to put you in the position to reach your goals. Um, it allows them to make better informed decisions on what's going to best suit them. So I just find by helping educate them and giving them that knowledge, it gives them more peace of mind to then mm. work out, well, what, what's the direction that they need to go? And, um, you know, and we use a bit of a process of here's all the different things that need to be looked at. Do you want to do this or do you want us to do this? Um, and generally you'll find that there might be a few things that they want to do and then, um, you know, one of the partner will look at the other one and go, you know, we don't even time have any time to do any of this. How, how are we going to find time to do that? And mm. um, it's just having that conversation and, and helping, I guess, guide the client to where they want to be, but also understanding that, you know, we've done this for a long time, we're the expert, and, and this is sort of the guidance on, on how it's going to be done. Um, you know, one thing we both learned um, when we did a course quite some time ago, Ben, was, um, you know, getting clients to actually um, understand that, you know, w- this is how it's got to be done and, and the way it needs to go. So it's um, totally instead of, instead of them dictating it the other way around. I was going to say when you were outlining that, that it sounds like Steve Salvia's magic wand list where it's like, here's all the things. It's like, would, do you want to do this? Or did you want to pay someone else to do it? Oh, yeah, of course you don't want to do it. Like most people yeah. don't. Or it's like you outsource. We do it faster, easier, and with less stress and let no time of their input. Like it, it makes sense, but people don't always know. While there is that transparency, I think is increasing. People don't know what's possible. Yeah. On that, though, you, you mentioned we were just chatting a bit offline and you talked about um, you had changed your sort of uh, let go of a number of clients in your license transition and you said that you're sort of retargeting the, at the front end of this conversation like the ideal clients that are consistent with what you want to be doing. What have been some of the learnings from what you've done in that space? Yeah, no, it's a good point. So um, I guess what we really did was went back to the drawing board and just basically went, right, what, what are we delivering for our clients? What are we actually doing for them? Um, and we sort of segmented sort of, I guess, the different packages that we offer from a servicing point of view um, and sort of demographically put them in those different packages from, you know, someone that's in their 20s to 30s to 40s and, and then towards retirement. And then from there sort of worked out, well, all right, what is it? What is our main target? And we sort of found, you know, it was sort of a... 30 to sort of, um, you know, 55 year olds, we still get, get the odd older client here and there as well. But we sort of went, well, this is really the niche of the advice that we're offering. This is really where we should be focusing. So what we did was then go, right, these are the ideal clients we want to focus. This is generally the advice that comes with those type of demographic. And here was, here was the different things of services that we we're going to offer them. So we sort of, decided to, I guess, make things more niche in terms of what we're doing because um, it's very easy just to get any new client that you that comes along um, in that regard as we used to do. But now it's more targeted to then go, right, this is sort of the target market we're looking for um, and here's all the different things that we're going to offer these clients um, throughout the process and, and throughout the year of servicing these clients. And what's been the impact? Uh, it, mate, it's been phenomenal. Like we... Dropped off a fair few clients that probably were just not quite the right ideal fit or just, I guess, in terms of the work that needs to be done, couldn't justify, um, I guess, the fees in terms of the value that was going to be given to them. So we had an open, honest conversation with them and some of them still sit on the books and that. We're just not physically servicing them because it wasn't – we didn't see that there was going to be value to them. Um, And you don't want to come 12 months' time and have that review and then – you know, you're going to get shown up pretty quick if you haven't done a lot for a client because there was just generally not much to do for these people. So by skimming off that bottom end, um, if anything, it's been better because we've actually been able to charge the right fees for the clients that we're dealing with for the work that's being done. Um, so I guess you could say we've reduced reduced the number of clients we service, but um, I guess overall the the increase in ongoing fees is has outweighed that um, loss as well. So it's it's been really productive move for us to do that change in the business. I love it. Our business coach says that if you put your prices up, I forget the actual numbers, but it was something like you put your prices up by 10% or 20% or something, you lose 30% of your clients, but you increase your profitability by you know, 50% or I'm just making these numbers up at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that where it's like you lose a big chunk of clients, but your profitability goes up because the numbers go down and then you've got 
better margins with the clients that you're working with and a lot of the the ones that would tend to drop off or opt out that they're they're the ones where there's no margin or you're potentially not even um getting paid what you need to with them so i made a love yeah. that it's so good so good to i hear. think it's important to go through your whole client database and work out you know what are you actually receiving from each client what service are you actually giving them um, and you're right you identify ones where really you, you're probably breaking even on even on them and you, you i guess you got to make that business decision to go you know what there's no value in keeping these clients um on so you know we did that process probably six months ago and and you know we did color bit um which you know you, you do take a little bit of a hit i guess um in your ongoing in that regard but it allows you to be more tailored and concentrated towards the ideal clients that you want for your business and um yeah if anything it's pretty one of the best decisions we've made in the business awesome and I, yeah i think that it's not about like sometimes as businesses evolve and your services evolve like the, the clients are just better served by using a different solution so there's something out there it's just that as you change and you grow that um it yeah that the, there's it does it sometimes it ends up moving away from what they need or or want or want to pay for or can pay for um as well. oh, exactly right you know it's like anything it's value for money right um That's it. If there's not a lot to do for someone's specific situation then you know you, you got to make that executive decision whether you're keeping them on as a client or not um and i think increasingly as well it's like you can't do you can't offer all things and like you say like work with clients in exactly the way like you can't work with every person in exactly the way that they want to be worked with because there's no way that you can run an efficient business in doing that so it's like you've got to you've got to stick to your guns and say well this is what we deliver which means that it's appealing to these clients and as that changes the clients potentially um change as well but mate, thank you so much for um, sharing your insights there. My last question for you is: if if you could go back to um, that that baby face version of yourself, as you say, the, <laughs> the day one of, of going out essentially into the self employed um, life, and and um, what would be your what would be your one piece of advice? Oh wow, geez, where do you start? Right, um, I found a very important process was we created an organisational chart of how I'd ideally like the business to look. And then I've added those roles um, within, within the organisation chart. I've then also done a reverse financial chart on that to actually put in what um, income is to be paid to each um, talent member within the organisation. But then it's allowed us to work out, well, where's the procedures that are required for each of those departments? I love it. I think that, I think that would be key because if you get your processes down packed in all the different areas, um, it makes life so much more easy as you grow. Um, you know, I guess having one employee back in the day, HR wasn't really an, an issue. It was more just a conversation. And obviously, as you build, HR is important. It's a pretty big piece of the pie the, this day and age, um, you know. So if anything, I, I'd say to people, if you do an organisation chart of all the different areas, whether it's, you know, your accountant, your advisors, CSOs, admins, um, you know, social media, like the whole box and dice, put in all those areas and then create uh, standards and procedures around each of those areas. Um, I would say that would probably be a great starting point um, for people to, to, I guess, step back and look at their overall business in terms of where they're trying to actually look to, to build it, um, but having those procedures in place. Because as you get bigger and you've got other advisors and other team members, you need everyone doing the same thing. Because all of a sudden, if one person's doing something different to another person, that's where mistakes happen. Yeah, totally. Um, and it's and it's not great. So I'd say getting the procedures and all the back end infrastructure in place in your business is just tenfold because once you've got that in place, it's so much easier to grow. Um, otherwise, you're building things as you go, and mm. you know you don't have time half the time. And that's when I think you can get too big, and you start losing touch of what you're meant to be doing for your clients because you're stretching too thin. Um, so I'd say they're the two biggest things that I wish I could have implemented at the start to have a bigger picture of where I'm taking my business. I love it. Start with the end in mind, mate. Some wise, wise mate. words there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, Manny, awesome. thanks for joining us, buddy. Really appreciate you sharing your gold. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next stage and domination of the Sunshine Coast, mate. Uh, we'll catch you on the yep. next one. Ah, for sure. Awesome, Benny. Oh, thanks very much, mate. Appreciate it.